much. God does not give you a gift and just take it away to break your heart. See, when God gives you a gift, he backs that gift up, and he says, I'm going to give you eternal life with it. Somebody say amen. I'm going to let you enjoy this gift. I'm going to let you smile about this gift. But I want you to not only see the gift, I want you to also experience the taste. Look, 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 look over here. Look at, look, at, look at what Jesus says here in this, in this uh, fourth chapter, what, what he says to this woman. Look at here. At, at, uh, look at 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never what? Shall never thirst. That's that eternal life I'm talking about. But the water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. See, that springing up part, when you need it, it's going to be there. Yes, sir. See, when, when, you need, when you need the proof of this everlasting life, and we need it at death, y'all. When, when you need the proof of this thing, he says it's going to be there. And you got to trust me in this, though. It's going to be there. Well, how can I ever prove that eternal life is real? All you got to do is go through the toll booth of death. That's all, that's all we have to do is go through the toll booth of death, and it will be proven that there is eternal life. All you have to do is live life like you can never die. And you'll start seeing the experience of the everlasting and the natural. Uh, I want you to hear this word. I want you to feel this word of eternal life. I want you to know that death is not something to fear us. Death is not something to make us afraid. Failure is not something to make us afraid. Failure is just failing forward towards success, and death is just a doorway to eternal life. I want you to change your perspective about, this is not so much a message about death, this is a message about about life and how to live your life and how to move forward in life and how to face life and how to embrace life with all of its difficulties. You cannot put life on hold. If you find yourself listening to the sound of my voice and you find yourself in a jail cell, live your life now. You find yourself carrying out a 20, 25-year prison sentence away from your friends and loved ones. And when you're in that environment, they say you're away from the world. Live your life. You find yourself in a hospital room right now, today. Live your life. I want you to understand that you have the promise of eternal life. And on that other side, it gets a little bit better. So he tells this woman to experience this taste. To experience what I have for you, those under the sound of my voice today, while you're young, I dare you to experience eternal life today. I, I double dare you, I triple dare you to live for God today. I dare you to, when I say live for God, that means give God your life. Don't go out there and try to be godly. You give him your life and you allow him to be godly through your life. Don't you understand that righteousness is like a coat that I wear? The coat is not me, but when I put this coat on, I become righteous in the eyes of God. And Christ Jesus is a coat. Christ Jesus is some garments that we wear. He wraps over us and covers us so that the almighty master can see us as his righteousness. I want you to see a verse in John 10, 10. Am I helping anybody? John 10, 10, I want to give you this lesson. He said, look here, the thief, now that's death. Death been telling a lie a long time, y'all. That thief, that's death. He's been telling a lie for so long. You know, you tell a lie long enough, it become the truth in, in the eyes of many folk. You know, you tell it convincingly enough, it becomes a truth in the eyes of many folks. I think I told y'all a story about de death and truth. Death and truth had a meeting at the park. And, and truth say, uh, 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 death said, truth, let's run on down, down to the creek and, and, and take a dive. So we had, we had truth and we had lies. Running down, jumping in the creek, first one, last one, there's a rotten egg. So we find that truth picked up the speed. 
And we saw that the lie seemed to be right on his trail. You saw that truth was the first one in. The lie threw a rock in and hid in the bushes. The lie took truth's clothes, put truth's clothes on, and took the lie clothes and threw them on the ground. Went back to the town center, called everybody around, and the lie, wrapped in truth clothes, began the whole court. And then truth came up naked, because truth can never put on a lie, and truth began to tell the butt naked truth, but they would not receive the butt naked truth, so, but they did receive a lie dressed up in truth's clothes. I want you to understand that this old thief of ours, he will put on the Bible says that the devil will masquerade as an angel of what? An angel of illumination, an angel of light. I want you to know the biggest lie that has been told is that we die. That's the biggest lie that's been told. We get sick and then we, we die. It's the biggest lie that has been told. See, when Christ came, read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when you get time. When Christ came, he took the sting of death away. He took the power of death away. And he gave us what? Eternal life. Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection. And what the first fruits mean, when you look go back to the farming days, you go back to harvest times, certain crops would produce first. And that crop would give you an indication of what was to what? Of what was to come. So you take that first crop and you be joyous because you know better things were in store. And then that's all Jesus was. Jesus is the first fruits of the experience of everlasting life. And when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we too become proponents of eternal life. The thief, death, cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to what? Destroy. Now, this is the words of Jesus. He says, I am come that they might have what? They might have life and that they might have it more. Well, life is life. Jesus, how are you going to give it to me more abundantly? He said, because you're never going to die. This life I'm giving you, when you walk through the toll booth of death, you just keep on going. You can really hit that gas and pick up speed if you want. You just keep going forward, living out the kingdom of the almighty God. I mean, that thing going to make you shout. it make you pull off your clothes right now and run around this room and there. I mean, I just told you, you cannot die today. Amen. The word of God just proved it out. You cannot die die on this particular day. You can't die next week. You can't die tomorrow. You can't die in 20 years. You will go to the next level of eternal life. You will begin to experience life like you never experienced it before. I want you to feel that. I want you to feel and I want you to endure your storms. Now, now we all have to go through uh, certain challenges in life. Uh, I told a a friend the other day, I said, you know, we don't know what, what weather of life God's going to have us walk through. We don't know what the weather's going to hold in our personal journey. We don't know who's going to get sick. We don't know who's not going to get sick. We don't know every challenge that we're going to go through. We do. They didn't know which plane the terrorist was going to be on, did they? They didn't know when you look at the shooting in Las Vegas, they didn't know which corner of the street had a bullseye on it. You see that wisdom there? The people went to Bible study in Charleston, South Carolina, they didn't know that their church, their church was going to be selected that day by evil. I want you to understand that we go through things in life. Here's the other thing I want you to understand about everlasting life, this life of Jesus. It is not for tomorrow. That's been the other lie. It is for today. Jesus says, I've come that they might have life. Zoe. They might have life like they've never experienced before. He didn't, he's not saying that one day in the future they're going to get something. He says, I've come to make a down payment so that one day in the future they can pick this up. No. That's not what he's saying. You know, you, you, if you have a parent and your parent loves you and a parent has some resources, 
what they will oftentimes do, they'll make out a will for you. And they'll set some things aside for you. So that when they're not here, the blessings are still here. Am I right or wrong? But the parent who's going to be good to you when they're absent is not going to be bad to you today. See, the parents who really love their children, they're just as good to them today as they will be when they're not here. What they're trying to do when they go away in death to eternal life, their parent is trying to leave some resources so they can still be good to them when they're no longer there. See, the good is designed to continue. What I want you to understand about God Almighty, what, y'all, what I want you to understand about accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when he says, I come to give you life, he said, I come to give you the will right now. <laughs> See, we were estranged from God. We had no rights, no privileges, no access to be a part of the bountiful blessings of God. For the Bible says, the life that sins must surely die. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is, but the gift of God is. But how do we engage in eternal life? If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, it talks about, Julia, how great things can be with God. You look at verses 1 through 13, I mean, it's really, really good. It's really amazing. It's really exciting. But if you go back somewhere around verse 3, it, it, uh, 1 and 3, it talks about that you must do all these things. You must live out all my word. Moses didn't do it. Adam didn't do it. Joseph didn't do it. Jacob didn't do it. I mean, you know Peter didn't do it. Dalton Thomas didn't do it. John the Baptist didn't do it. Saul, who became Paul, didn't do it. No one in human history has done it except Jesus Christ. So the challenge becomes, how can we live this life? How can we experience the bountiful goodness of God? He said, I bless you coming out. I bless you going in. I bless your crops. I bless your, your land. I bless your family. I bless your home. I bless your income. I bless your body. I bless your mind. All of these are natural blessings. And the way you get the natural blessings is you have to be the righteousness in the eyes of God. But when we look through history, no man has ever done it. So when Jesus, I mean now, I'm in John 10, 10. When Jesus says, I've come to give them life, what he's saying is, I'm going to allow you to walk in the power of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 13. You're going to 